Hey, free to play gang, welcome back to another video. So for today, there is something a little bit more urgent coming this weekend. Okay, so as you can see, there is going to be a two times EXP and gold drop event. This is usually very big in terms of like, you know, building more six star espers. So this video is going to cover a little bit about that. Now, what I want to show you guys is that I'm currently using uh, Jiang Man as my fodder farmer. So I want to give you a little bit of a showcase on uh, what she can do and why I would highly recommend if you have a Jiang Man to definitely build her either for this coming weekend event or during the event itself. So you're not going to regret this, all right? So let's take a look at my Tiangman over here. So we're going to start off with her skills. I have her just very recently maxed out. So uh, she's completely kept over here, completely kept on her third skill as well. I would highly recommend that you cap her because, you know, the cooldown reduction to three turns, that's huge. And this, you know, it has a little bit more damage and it will be a little bit clearer as well what's going to happen down the road. Okay, so let's take a look at this, right? Passage deals damage equal to 80% of attack to two random targets and marks the target with Nether Bloom. Now, what is Nether Bloom? So enemies marked with Nether Bloom will suffer a Nether Bloom Blast after taking five attacks and receiving damage equal to 85% of her attack. This Blast also deals damage of the same amount to two other random enemies, has a 50% chance of silencing the affected targets for two turns. And what does silence do, you can only cast your basic ability. Now we're gonna skip her passive first and take a look at her third skill, right? So basically attacks all enemies three times, dealing damage equal to 110% of attack to each enemy and marks them with Nether Bloom. So that's basically it, right? An AoE attack that marks enemies with Nether Bloom. But let's take a look at her passive now because this is what, you know, consolidates her entire kit. So Flower Puffs inflicts poison on an enemy afflicted with Nether Bloom for two turns and has a 50% chance to counter attack when Jiang Man is attacked by an enemy afflicted with Nether Bloom. So this is very important for her kit in terms of like counter-attacking, right? So she's probably the biggest counter-attacker in this game, maybe save for like Falcon and all that, but she has a lot of damage at the same time. Now let's move on to the relics that I have her equipped with, okay? You can definitely refer to my spreadsheet for more information on relics, but I'm equipping her with Hades Avatara. Now, Hades is very clear-cut, right? She's going to be a fodder farmer, so she needs to be able to upkeep her own HP. So basically what I'm aiming for is to have a, a lot of speed and a lot of crit rate and as much attack and, you know, a little bit of sustain as much as I can as well. So I'll say that she needs a lot of stats, but yet at the same time, she's not exactly that difficult to build because what you really need to aim for is just at least 190 speed and the rest should go to your crit rate, you know, a little bit of crit damage and attack and a lot of defensive stats as well because she's going to need that to survive. So my second relic has crit damage, accuracy, crit damage, crit rate, uh, and my third relic has crit rate, speed, and attack. And my fourth relic has HP percentage. I will highly recommend defense instead. I just didn't have any more defense percentage relics, along with a little bit more crit rate and some defense. And finally, for our avatar, I have speed, crit rate, accuracy, HP, just generally really good stats for her. Speed, crit rate, attack percentage, and speed. So these are the stats that are very important for her. And as you can see, I don't really have like a whole ton of accuracy. Uh, that's because you don't really desperately need to rely so much on poisons, in my opinion. I think what makes her so strong is that she counter attacks a lot. Now let's finish off with the the ascensions all right so as you can see here she has attack flat hp accuracy increased by 10 percent 15% attack and 20% HP. And as for resonance, I'm just going straight up attack percentage. I think this works on her the best. But I think one downfall that she has is that she does not have a reliable leader buff. Okay, so this is only applicable in the holo battle, which is really unfortunate. But without further ado, let me show you exactly why she is so good for this coming weekend event. Now we're going to take a look at Purgatory 12 and we are going to see exactly why she's so good. So I have a few fodders over here and she's just going to solo everything, right? So we're going to go ahead and do a multi battle. I do not have my two times EXP on right now but this is just for the showcase okay so as you can see she takes a lot of turns and now the reason why i need her to be at least 190 speed is because she needs to lap the enemies and in order for you to lap every single enemy on purgatory 12 practice stage you need to have at least 190 speed now okay so here are some information okay so uh what triggers the nether bloom okay so for example what you know reduces the timer on your nether bloom because you know you need to hit the enemy five times before it blows up right so here are the few things that triggers your nether bloom ticks. So the first is going to be raw damage. So for example, if you counter attack and you land some damage, that's going to reduce the counter, obviously. And another thing that is quite important is poison ticks. Okay, so even the poisons that she land, when it triggers on the enemy, that actually reduces the timer by one as well. And if you successfully kill the enemy prematurely before, you know, that the five ticks are gone, he will also explode. Now, what does not trigger the nether bloom tick, all right? So there are two things. 
One is the Nether Bloom explosion itself. So when it explodes, it damages two other enemies, right? But during this situation, you do not actually reduce the timer on both of the other espers over there. And cleansing effects also do not trigger the Nether Bloom explosions. All right, so that's very important to know. She is extremely hard countered by cleansers, so to speak, right? Okay, so here are some additional tips that I've actually realized while using her. Okay, so these are some of the things that you may not actually realize. Number one, Nether Bloom can actually crit. Now that is insane in my opinion, it's a debuff that crits, that's crazy right? But in the same vein, that also means that you know the nether bloom can also land misses, right? So for example, sometimes you might notice that you see I have a miss over there. So that only happened because we have elemental disadvantage and with elemental disadvantage, we have a 50% chance of missing. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but it still does pretty good damage in my opinion. Now the nether bloom does not trigger your Hades set effect as well. So when it explodes, that's not gonna heal you, okay? So even though it can create, it is not technically damage based on yourself, but yet it still scales according to your crit damage so there is that now thirdly nether bloom does not require accuracy even if she misses so even if she attacks like a, a wind type right she has a 50 percent chance of missing but she would always land the nether bloom debuff but i mean obviously the enemy has to be not immune right so hype for example he is not going to receive the debuff and the fourth point is that nether bloom does not spawn from nether bloom explosion so if it explodes and it damages other enemies that does not count as a damage source from uh jiang man herself so that's not going to trigger even more nether bloom explosions so to speak right that's not going to trigger more nether bloom debuffs now the fifth point which is a little bit more technical is that you cannot counter twice with her passive and with an avatar set so even though I'm running her with Avatara, she's not going to be able to counter attack twice in the sense that you cannot proc her passive and then proc Avatara at the same time. It's either or, right? But the thing is, the reason why I use her with Avatara is so that her counter attack rate is more than 50%, right? It's slightly more, I think it's maybe about 60% or something like that if it averages out. I haven't actually done the math, but it's more than 50%, which is very effective. And finally, the sixth tip for you is that Nether Bloom lands on the third proc of her third skill. So you're not actually going to see like Nether Bloom followed by poisons and poisons like you know based on her second skill there isn't an internal synergy in her own kit which is the only sad thing that she has in her kit basically so with that out of the way as you can see we are doing pretty decent run times right we are sub two minutes and generally i'm at around like one minute 45 seconds plus minus like 10 seconds so she's technically the fastest fodder farmer that i have right now i have liling and i have tang Xuan and they either do not do it faster or they have much lower survivability now the reason why she is so fast and so reliable is that you do not need to build her with attack right so as you can see i did not run her with attack i only have crit damage on her but the reason why she's doing it so fast is that she has a lot of damage coming from all of her debuffs right all her poison stacks all of her nether bloom effects and all that so she is very strong even without building her with like a whole ton of attack percentage so one thing right now that i'm trying to do is to probably run her for chronos because i do feel like she has an amazing kit that is really very suited for soloing chronos however i can never get past the 50 percent hp mark maybe it's because of the quality of my relics i'm not sure because as you can see she's not exactly built with like uh, insane relics okay i'll only say that her speed here is probably on the higher end but in terms of crit rate she only has 70 percent crit rate in terms of crit damage she only has 90 percent crit damage that's not a lot right and in terms of attack she has like absolutely nothing she has like almost no attack so she's not very difficult to build but she's a high performer so that's why I really, really recommend her as a fodder farmer. Now, the only reason why I've discovered her is because I've watched a video of Death Punk actually covering her as like his fodder farmer. And I think his does a little bit better as well. And he built his slightly different. I think he has her at 200 speed with attack percentage, HP percentage, and speed, something like that. I'm not exactly sure. I know he does not run her with crit damage, even though she crits, which is quite unfortunate in my opinion. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is basically Jiang Man as an insane fodder farmer. I really, truly enjoy using her. She makes farming fodder so, so easy, right? So that's the whole reason why I was sitting on 25 star uh, fodder materials, right? And that's because I have her and she's doing it so fast for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now, with that said, this has been Daddy Free to Play. And as always, I will see you in the next video.